you be my friend. We are discussing episode five of And Just Like That, the new Sex in the City chapter that's on HBO. I am Kylie Gail Garcia. Hi, everyone. I'm Jasmine. <laughs> and we are here to just talk about this new episode where a lot of things happened. So we're kind of playing catch up. We just filmed our last one like two, three days ago. <laughs> so I feel like I want to jump right in, but then I'm also like, did anything interesting happen in the last two days? <laughs> I feel like I'm still in a similar place of just getting on my feet. I mean, I just got out of therapy, so definitely feeling good, but also, you know, <laughs> therapy. Yeah, nothing too exciting over here. I feel like we jumped right on. I didn't have a chance to take off my my really obnoxious blue blockers yet. So I'm just yeah. going to kind of rock this look similar to Carrie in this episode doing her podcast, which we'll talk about later. I'm just going to rock it. This is what the people get from me. So well, I love that look on you. I feel like <laughs> it's so mod. And I'm be very I intense. Before, I told you before we got on, I was like, I was a little late because I was trying to tame my greasy hair and I decided to take inspiration from those little foofy dogs and do one of these things. So this is what the people get. This is what the people get. And awesome glasses. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, I'm just really excited to talk about this one. But yeah, I'm very pro therapy. I'm in all the types of therapy right now. (laughs) So, you know, and I'm learning a lot. And I noticed that during the holidays, when I did not get my regular therapy, I had like a moment that was a little bit Carrie-esque, I guess, <laughs> where I just kind of freaked out about like everything that I would have told my therapist. I started telling anybody around me who would listen. Yep. So I guess, you know, therapy is a great thing and it's a great ventilation system. <laughs> so yeah, I'm on board with that. I've got therapy after this actually. <laughs> So I guess that's the theme of of this little uh, intro is therapy. We love it. It's a lot, but we love it. We're talking about episode five. As I said, Mm -hmm. it's called Tragically Hip. The synopsis says, as Carrie recuperates from hip surgery, Charlotte learns surprising news about her daughter and Che's words help Miranda face some truths about her life. Oh, is that how they word it these days? Words. (laughs) Just words. Facing (laughs) truths. Oh, man. Oh, fun. Yeah. We love the synopsis. The synopsi. (laughs) (laughs) The synopsis. Synopsi, I think. (laughs) So we're starting with the umbrella cane scene. And Carrie is bringing Seema into her apartment building and she has to take the stairs and she grabs an umbrella and starts using it like a cane up the stairs. Like, what are we doing with these kind of like age related things? What are we doing here? Same. That was my exact reaction. I was like, wow, we're going there. (laughs) She's not just in her fifties. She's in her (laughs) eighties. It's kind of like they're in on it. You know, because I think there's a lot of chatter about their age and how long it's been and how they've aged and all these things, which I think we talked about a little bit in episode one of this podcast. But I think the writers maybe were leaning into it and like, you know what, you guys want to comment about age? Let's have a whole gag about this. You know? That's true. I actually kind of like the idea of them being in on it and sort of laughing along and just being like, yeah, what if I'm like, you know, need hip surgery. (laughs) By the way, I totally forgot our drink thing. Are you having a drink? I am. It was almost just kind of coincidence, but I did a little shot of decaf espresso for Sigmatic. It's got the reishi in it, which I love. So just a little comfort, soothing, warm drink after, after the therapy. (laughs) It's actually like 73 degrees out here in California. Really? Yeah. It was freezing. Like the last one we filmed, I was cold. And yeah. you know, now this one, I'm like, oh, I'm like in my little, my little crop top and I'm, 
you know, oh my gosh, walking the dogs in the sun. Maybe that was, a, I was a little behind because we were just like strolling in the sun and not trying to get our walk. Yeah. I mean, I was just excited because the, we have, we call it glowing clouds is what my kids call it. So instead of full sun and instead of full gray, we have glowing clouds today. So it's, I mean, you can kind of see behind me. It's like, it's <laughs> looks like sunshine is out. So Oregon. I was excited for that. <laughs> yeah. We have like full direct blue sky sunshine today. So wow. I'm having a watermelon lime juice because mm. a, it was what I could grab quickly and B it's perfect for a sunny day. So that sounds really that's divine. That sounds, like that's this. very California, just all around mm-hmm. sunny day in January, drinking watermelon <laughs> juice. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling it. I love that. So anyway. So, okay. So then we go to Dr. Patel and she gets the whole evaluation and ends yeah. up finding out that it's not an old thing. It's a congenital birth thing. It's just a thing. It turns just, out it's, it's just a thing, which I had no idea what they were talking about, to be honest. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot to say on that because I was like, <laughs> sure. I just accepted it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, great. Well, it's a thing. Medical jargon. like <laughs> just, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they kind of gave us another, like a little bit of a bait and switch there, I think, where they were like, oh, Carrie's getting old, you know? And, mm-hmm. and then they go, oh no, it's not that. So then we go to the cafe. Yeah. And oh my God, are you, do you know why I'm smiling so big? I want to know. <laughs> you want to know. You look, I, I was like waiting for you to say, it. I was like, I'm so excited about this episode. I feel like I'm like already talking so much. I'm so happy to see Anthony sit okay. at the table with them. Yeah. And just that's like, what I was wondering if you were excited about that. Cause I was too. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that he acknowledged it too. He was like, oh, this yeah. is a big deal. Like it was like he knew that it was a big deal to be there. And like it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to see him acknowledge yeah. that. And he was funny. He yeah. was funny. We wait for those lines from him, I feel like. Whenever I see him on screen, I'm like. I'm just waiting for a little zinger, you know, <laughs> Yes, it's some funny little line that he comes up with. And yeah, I liked it. It's something about, I didn't, I didn't write it down, but he said something about like the dust that is your bones inside yeah. <laughs> the fossil or and you know, it was, it yeah. was totally like, dragon carry with it. Yeah. It was funny and like, so good to have him there. And like, the whole scene in general was pretty, pretty cute. Was it this episode where Miranda wanted to get a bottle? Am I remembering that right or no? I think she wanted like champagne or something to celebrate. Oh, okay. Mm. And so there's like that moment of tension, I think, that they're trying to set yeah. up here. And then we've got Charlotte on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Very now, very now to be in a group setting like that. Everybody's Zooming away. And I kind of loved this because I completely understood Harry's side of this whole situation where we find out that Charlotte's child has like essentially changed their name to everyone else except their parents. And I felt like it wasn't even about the name change. It was about almost the humiliation of being the last to know and feel like, wait, I thought I was closer to my kid than this. You know, so I definitely was a feeling for him in that. I was like, oh man, I would be like, yeah, it was, it was kind of silly and cute, the whole TikTok scene and that sort of thing. But I would be so embarrassed if I were Charlotte and you're standing there thinking, oh my gosh, I don't even know my child's name. Yeah, that really, that, I mean, even again, being a person without kids, I still could imagine that that would be really difficult. Um, Cause I mean, that's your little nuclear family, you know, I yeah. imagine there's something that everybody knows about my husband that I don't know that it could be a similar feeling of like, oh, like everybody's talking about it. Like it's just old news now, you know, it's just like oh, yeah. it's part of life. And you're like, wait, I'm supposed to be the first. Like, I think you kind of think that about your close knit family. Yeah. So it was it was kind of, I loved how Charlotte was being so supportive and I loved the the teachers being so, I love the idea of a kid going to school and like 
being supported by their peers and their teachers. I was like, that's excellent. That's so great. But yeah, just being the last to know <laughs> would be really alarming for me. And so I kind of understood Harry in that sense. And then he was also just feeling frustrated because he's not sure if it's a phase, which I, you know, I think that his points were pretty valid of like just him knowing his kid. Yeah. But then also Charlotte's point of like, we just need to be supportive. And I think sometimes older generations, which maybe is the point that they're making, do have such a binary in their head that it is really difficult because it's like one or the other. Like it can't be fluid. We don't have permission to change our mind, those sorts of things. Yeah. You know what I thought about Harry, now that I'm kind of sitting and letting it marinate, I was a little bit surprised at the beginning because I thought, well, it seems that he's closer to rock <laughs> now, um, he's closer to them than than Charlotte is what it seems like and so mm. I thought oh he's going to be more understanding or more kind of it's not a big deal just let them do what they do and I was pleasantly surprised at how Charlotte was reacting and how she was not resisting and kind of being nurturing and like we need to let them take the lead and all of that. But now that I think about it, it's like, well, maybe because they've been so close, Harry has, he feels even more hurt by it. You know, he feels even yeah. more like, how did I not, how was I not in the loop on this? Cause they keep showing, you know, rock and Harry skateboarding or video games or, and it just feels like, there's a little bit more of a bond there between the two of them. Definitely. And I think too, there's just that, I mean, the different generations, I mean, for me, I'm a little bit of a younger parent. So it seems a little bit more obvious to me to just be like, Hey, this is what it is for now and give them permission and space to change their mind or to explore these feelings and have things change later on down the line where I think like our parents or people who are a bit older than me, even by just five or 10 years, things have been so different. We don't have those examples around those generations. And, and then it's like, oh, if they've chosen a side, then they've like chosen this. If they've changed their name, this is it, you know? And it's just kind of like um, that pressure that they feel to you know, do the right thing, say the right thing. And, and like Harry said, is this just a phase, you know, and it's just kind of like kids do go through phases. Sure. But yeah. I just, I think it's relatable. I think it's relatable to any parent, like maybe they're thinking that and not saying it out loud, you know, like these days, especially with cancel culture. I mean, to be honest, so many people are just like, it's almost like you sort of react and accept things before even fully digesting it. And I feel like Harry gave us a little glimpse into what it might look like to fully digest and really think about this situation. So even though it was kind of cute, I liked how they did it with the TikTok video and like all these silly little things. I thought his frustration was kind of valid and it was like, yeah, that's pretty real. I really like that they're showing the process of this and not just be like, oh, now it's this and we just accept it and that's easy. Just everybody make it easy. Like that's not how it's going to be if you think you know somebody and you're surprised or you know, you're caught off guard or like, there's so many other factors and it doesn't make rock wrong for wanting to be rock. It just means like there's feelings involved and there's other stuff going on, you know, around yeah. it. And that's more real. I just thought of something. Have they said how old rock is? I'm not remembering. I think he did. Or I think he said when they were saying, is this a phase? I think Harry said she's 12 years old or she's 13, mm. something like that. Oh, okay. I think they said 12. Okay. I was just kind of curious because that, yeah. Yeah. I feel like definitely at 12, you kind of are exploring your identity and like have a little bit more knowledge about yourself. Please that makes sense to me. Us if I'm wrong, <laughs> <laughs> email us at <laughs> my friend show at gmail.com. I could be wrong, but I think they did say it and I could be getting the number wrong, but I think Harry did say she's whatever years old and it was somewhere in that kind of preteen middle school area. Makes sense to me. We go from there. And so Miranda's first, she's unpacking tube socks and lube. 
interesting son yeah and his girlfriend yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> no shame but like oh still icky to me I it's still a line that I'm having a hard maybe I'm an old fogey but it's a line I'm having a hard time kind of crossing with that yeah. if I could if I had a kid I even think with it's... my nephew like when he gets to that age just being yeah. like I just shouldn't be involved in this part of your life it almost seems like Miranda accidentally became the in quotes cool mom you know like she sort of like had porous poor boundaries and then that led to like them being like oh great she's cool with this and <laughs> just completely taking yeah. advantage which I wonder if that's more a result of just her kind of like feeling so flattened by her relationship or just kind of feeling so like, oh, right. Just like, I don't even want to deal like, with this. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not even wanting to put the effort out to like set the boundary or, you know, mm -hmm. enforce it and then deal with the consequences of enforcing it, which maybe is them sneaking out. Yeah. I totally get that. That makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it's super gross, but I think the girlfriend said at some point, she's like, oh, my mom would, you know, my mom would never like that. Just sort of alluding yeah. to like the fact that she thinks Miranda's kind of this cool mom. She would like, she said something about my mom would like douse me in holy water or something yeah. like that. I was like, oh yeah. I really like <laughs> Miranda like accidentally became this, this cool mom that lets them do these things. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. they probably see it in a totally different way than she does, but it seems like she's on a, a, a train she can't quite get off of at this point if she's just casually handing over strawberry flavored lube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could really cross some lines there. You've It'd be hard to pull bed. back from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems that you've made the bed and your son and his girlfriend are going to go lie in it now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the other part of that moment is her receiving this quit like a woman book. Yes. And yeah. And assuming yeah. that it's a mistake or that it's from Charlotte. Because then yeah. we get to the doctor's office and she's having that conversation with Carrie about it. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting that she's been sort of casual and not defensive up to this point. I've sort of noticed that like every time Charlotte says something, she just seems very like comfortable and like, no, what are you talking about? Like, it doesn't seem to be bothering her. But then when she gets this book, she's like, so alarmed like she's like so struck by it and she's like oh my god like she's you could tell she's really flustered and then she's really upset when she's telling Carrie and I thought that was kind of interesting I was like oh now she's defensive like now all of a sudden it's like she's becoming aware that maybe this is a problem which I thought was just kind of curious she's kind of feeling called out I think and I, I do believe that she really is like oh my god this is from Charlotte and we have yeah. no evidence of that. Right. But because Charlotte, they keep setting up these moments where Charlotte's like, I'm concerned or, you know, let's talk about your drinking. And I think she's just like, well, that ha it has to be Charlotte. And it is mm -hmm. kind of a Charlotte move. Like right. <laughs> you could see Charlotte doing like something a little bit passive aggressive, but like genuinely trying to help. Carrie seems to be just being like a supportive friend and not really taking a side. Do you feel that? I do. And I feel like it's actually kind of been funny to me how, and I can't tell, I'm like, is it just because she's so much in her own little world, but she just has been so like, not with it with the whole, like Charlotte seems genuinely concerned and Carrie's just like, whatever, whatever. And then just completely is letting it all slide. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, she definitely just kind of is letting it all unfold as it may. It just doesn't seem to have any particular thoughts or feelings around it. It's a little funny to me. I think obviously it's a big deal to lose the love of your life suddenly. Um, so she's already got all that going on. She's dealing with like apartment stuff and all that. And now this hip thing. <laughs> but I think even if you look back, I'm just taking the, the role of sex in the city historian. Apparently I feel like I always do this, but you know, historically in, in the early seasons, she is kind of criticized a few times for being a little bit like absorbed in her own stuff and not making room for like her friend's issues. I would really agree with that. I really 
I do think that Carrie in general as a character tends to be, she really does just kind of focus on her own stuff. I, I did read an article or something I'm trying to remember, but somebody had pointed out that she was kind of mostly an anti-hero, which is extremely narcissistic. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> she's really has a hard time seeing outside of her what's right in front of her and what's in her own little world. So Maybe that could be why she's not really taking a side. She either doesn't notice or maybe she genuinely just doesn't really care that much. She's just really focused on her own, yeah. her own life. I mean, and, and it is very in character for both of them. Charlotte to be kind of pushing and being like, hey, you know, something's wrong. I'm concerned. Something's wrong. That's a lot more Charlotte and Carrie to be kind of like, well, you know, I'm just here for the ride. And exactly. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just going to watch you guys talk about this and I'm not involved. <laughs> like, yeah. Very yes. Carrie thing. Yeah. So I think I can be guilty of that sometimes too. It's like, I think I'm guilty of both actually. <laughs> I think if I really like see something and I'm really bothered, but see if it involves me right? If it doesn't involve me, I'm like, I don't want to deal with that drama. So I kind of do keep it, you know, even if it's something that I know is of concern between other people or about somebody else, I don't tend to be like, I try not to insert myself like that. And I also think I can be guilty of like, just being so caught up in my own feelings. Actually in therapy, we've been learning about (laughs) wise mind, which is a combination of the emotional mind and like a logical mind and being able to use both at the same time to find kind of like the most wise truth that you can find and the most wise like situation. And I found that I tend to really live in my emotional mind. (laughs) And so my work is to like get into the logic side of things And that way it can have more balance because I think that that is probably why people like me and Carrie deal with things that way. If something's just taking our emotional bandwidth, they're kind of drawing us in about that. And it's really affecting us. We're just kind of like in that so much. Whereas I think the more logical minded people are like, well, let's just step back and like not be so absorbed in the feelings. Carrie needs (laughs) to go to therapy. (laughs) She really does. (laughs) <laughs> how many critiques and things that I've listened to that have talked about therapy, 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 therapy Carrie needing to go to therapy therapy <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to make it like a thing and it's not a thing it's not a thing, <laughs> not a thing. but yeah there's the, only that one episode where she goes and then she meets Bon Jovi oh yeah he's so cute she needed to stick with it. She didn't have the right therapist. And she wasn't really, ha- she was really having a hard time focusing on like the task at hand. She was like more focused <laughs> on the plant and, and the cute guy <laughs> and her outfit. Potentially your favorite scene in the hospital room. Oh, yes. <laughs> I did like having them in the hospital room. I, yeah, I started to really, really enjoy this. Like once she got the surgery and she's all hopped up on the medication and then she has to pee and it's like this whole production to get her into the bathroom and it just cracked me up for some reason. Also, I thought the hospital room was incredible. I was like, well, this is a beautiful hospital. It's a beautiful hospital bathroom. And to have her friend there helping her get onto the toilet And then she's so numb, she can't feel herself peeing. So she's like peeing for the longest time. And I was just was laughing so much at that back and forth between her and Charlotte of like, I guess I didn't have to go. And she's like, no, you're going. (laughs) I'll let you know when you stopped. The whole thing was so funny. The fact that she was wearing those long pearls in the hospital and having her, it just, I loved the whole thing. I thought it was so funny. The pearls and the card, the sparkly, I think it has sparkles on it. Cardigan over the top of the hospital gown with the open butt. Like hilarious. I just, (laughs) I was like, I love everything about this. Oh my God. Like they couldn't just give her a blanket, like a normal person. (laughs) You know, she had to be like in pearls. And yeah, I mean, that was very unexpected. I don't know that I actually laughed out loud when it happened, but I was kind of like, wait, what's happening? 
<laughs> well, you know what? I, too, I was it's not expecting her to not know she was peeing. <laughs> it's probably so relatable. I thought of this afterward because I found it so funny. And then I actually heard some people who also didn't fully relate to the scene. And I thought, okay, I probably think it's very funny because one, I have experience of being that person in the hospital who people have to help. So I have that experience. Also being a doula, you're often in the hospital with people in particular situations where they can't feel their legs or they need help doing things. And you're very much in their space, literally helping them to the bathroom. So I think I have more context for like just hospital life. (laughs) So it felt, it felt relatable to me on both sides. I've been the caregiver and I've also been the person sitting on the toilet and like, it just was so real and so funny to me. And sometimes it really is like that. Like you need someone to help you and you need them to help you do really ridiculous things, like get to a toilet and be lowered down slowly. (laughs) Yeah. I kind of wondered about that. And I didn't know if you wanted to talk about anything involving that part of your life, but I, I was like, Oh, like maybe it's funnier. Cause you remember times that you can relate to, you know? Yeah. Just that vulnerability of being like, I need help, but like, no, I'd like really need help. <laughs> like if people, you know, people think help looks a certain way, but it's like, no help might be shuffling me to the bathroom, <laughs> yeah. seeing me in like a hospital gown, seeing my naked ass hovering above a toilet. Like this <laughs> might be what help looks like. <laughs> oh man. So I just kind of loved that. I loved all of that. I also thought Miranda was so ridiculous in this scene, like her, her, teenager like excitement to have Shay coming up was just like so ridiculous every time she's like they're coming up and it's like literally no like this is the worst time and I just thought that was so funny that she was so blinded she couldn't see that this was like the worst possible timing to have come yeah. up for it. I was just like Miranda no like what are you doing yeah. so so funny it was kind of funny and for Carrie to like take her down a notch so quickly <laughs> <laughs> Like, actually, I'm just trying to get onto the toilet and my boss coming in right now does not sound like a good idea. Exactly. (laughs) Like, make that not happen, I think is what she says. Yes. So I guess that's the next place we go is this little impromptu lunch date with (laughs) Miranda and Che. Yeah, I kind of liked this I liked getting that background of Che a little bit because I thought that what they were speaking to was pretty real I mean who can't relate to speaking of us like going to therapy and stuff now I think a lot of us are having this conversation more and more that like when you're not true to yourself it does affect you in physical ways like we kind of are accepting of that I feel like um so it's interesting to hear that conversation and and just kind of like, yeah, I think a lot of us are having those sorts of conversations. Yeah. Now hundred percent as, you know, not just as a health coach, but as just a person who's been through life for 32 years, I, I just feel like nobody could convince me otherwise now that yeah. those things aren't connected because every time I've got an issue going on, I can tie it back. You know, my body just reacts to situations that aren't just, you know, I think there's a temptation in in the wellness world to just focus on food only and just, oh, just have a very clean diet and drink a lot of water. And sometimes you're too stressed and your body's still going to do things and you have to actually like remove the stress or manage the stress better. Or like, it's not just the physical stuff that is easier to measure. And so I really was like appreciative of that part of the conversation. And obviously it was definitely used as a vehicle to, again, show how Miranda's, the reason Miranda's attracted to Che. Yeah. You know, which I think is because Che is reminding her of things that she's lost in herself. Yeah. And, or, you know, opening up possibilities that she longs for, for herself that maybe she didn't realize was possible. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, she's kind of free. And Miranda's just really longing for that. Yeah. And Miranda's so, yeah. <laughs> you know, she always yeah. has kind of been that way where she's like regimented. I think, you know, it's hard for her to be free. <laughs> as soon as I said that, I thought of that episode where she fakes the orgasm. <laughs> and that is, I think that is hands down my favorite 
scene of Miranda ever shot when she like rips open well, or no I'm thinking of the um there's two I guess that are kind of like that there's the one where she's doing the the fake orgasm for one more time and it says Miranda came she came back for one more performance and she goes oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's, like she's like tossing her head <laughs> It makes me laugh so hard every time. And then the other one is when they go to LA and she's trying to be more loose and sexual and free. So she rides the bull and she rips up. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> I just love that. And her eyes get so wide. Like, yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing the thing. Yeah. I feel like that oh, is God. so that I love Miranda so much. And I do think like it's interesting to see what we know of Miranda and see kind of what happens when somebody sort of lives by the book and does the things that they think they're supposed to do and accomplishes the goals. And then what does life look like when you've lived that way? Maybe a little bit untrue to yourself. You know, we didn't really know that at the time, they didn't really talk about that in the Sex and the City show, but like, maybe it didn't actually feel that good. You know, there was little clues along the way that you know, Steve wasn't a soul shaker or like certain things weren't exactly the way she wanted. And she kind of compromised and moved to Brooklyn. And then what happens when now you're in your fifties and you've lived your life that way? And like, how do you feel, you know, and you, we kind of see her kind of longing for the, the roads she didn't take and the things she didn't do. It's I kind mean, of a, yeah. Would you go so far to say that Miranda's a cautionary tale? Oh, well, <laughs> because <laughs> that's really like now that I'm looking back I'm like wow like the possibility that like she really wasn't in the driver's seat for herself is almost like shocking to me because I think in in the beginning and as you're watching her early seasons you're thinking like wow she's really take charge she knows what she wants she doesn't mm-hmm. accept anything less than that right but maybe it's she knows what she should want or what people think she should want and it's not yeah. really true to her. And that, that kind of shakes me <laughs> well, <laughs> to be, to like, be well, honest, like necessarily who I thought she was. I think that for me, and maybe that's just my perception of her, but that's the way I've always thought of Miranda a little bit is that I think of Miranda in the early seasons as being like a very take charge person. I really appreciated like this very strong to me, she had a great balance of the masculine and feminine energy. Like she was going for it, but she also was kind of feminine and sexy and fun. And so like, I loved that about her. And in my opinion, as the seasons went on, although I continued to love her character, I felt that she just continued to settle. Like she just kept settling and settling and settling in so many different ways. And, and just, you could see these in these subtle ways of like with her job, like loving her job and wanting to do her job, but also letting those hours encroach on certain things. And you know, letting herself start a family, but maybe not in the way she necessarily thought was going to happen. Letting herself be with Steve, even though he wasn't like lighting up her life, letting herself move to Brooklyn, all these things that in my opinion, we tell women are like the right choices to make. And so watching the show, you might think like, oh yeah, she's doing like the right thing, the right thing for her family, the right thing. But it's, we don't know what was going on in her head, but I always wondered like, is this the right thing for her though? Like what, what did she want to do? That's so interesting that you just laid it all out like that. Cause now it's like, of course you can see it, but I didn't, I did not see that. And until you said it and now I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. My sister-in-law, she was watching the seasons for the first time and she was messaging me about them. And after she finished, I was like, what did you think? You know, I'm all excited. And like, who's your favorite? Who do you relate to? And she said that she was funny. She said, she's a combination of Charlotte and um, Samantha. And Mm -hmm. I was like, what an interesting combination. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I really relate to Carrie, but I admire Miranda the most. Like I really love Miranda's character. She's probably my favorite character, you know, besides Carrie. And she was like, yeah, she definitely had the most growth. Everybody to each their own, but like, her idea of life is a little bit more traditional. She's been wanting to have a child and, you know, she wanted to do everything in order, you know, (laughs) get married, have a kid, you know, buy the house. And so I think to her, like her perceptions, like, oh, she went from this thing that wasn't 
like she grew because she went from who she was at the beginning to this woman who like gave things up for her family mm-hmm. and that's growth which we're told is like the good thing yeah. to do we're like told that's was, good you no know, she did everything for her family or for her to keep her and steve together even in the movie right the first movie like mm-hmm. she chooses to work it out with him even after she's angry and she doesn't want to for a while she does what she can to work it out you know to work it out with him and those two different sides like you, yeah. it could be true both ways right it's like, I yeah. think it depends on the person's priorities so like we don't know Miranda's priorities but to me like her doing everything for her family would be the right thing if her top priority was family and those sorts of values and keeping the family together if that was her number one value and that brought her joy I would think that yeah you did the right things and you would feel good at the end of the day after that if you were just doing that because it seems like the right thing to do and the thing that everyone else told you was the right thing to do, then at the end of the day, you're not going to feel good because that actually wasn't what was true to you. And I think that I, like Why? for me, like <laughs> for me, like I always toward the end, I would have these moments of loving Miranda so much and also my heart breaking a little bit for her because I would see like the one scene, one of my favorite scenes is Miranda doing the sponge bath to her mother-in-law, like in that very dramatic, like in the music. And it's just so, it's so sweet, but I always, my heart would break a little bit because I would think about Miranda in the very first seasons. And I would think like, she, I don't know that in my opinion, that that character, like wanted to be a caregiver in that way like that's extreme giving and there's certain people who are really drawn to that and I don't know that Miranda was one of those people so that's just my opinion and kind of my take on it but that's always how I've internalized Miranda like I've like in my mind created her to I I didn't see it as like sacrificing in a good way I always saw it as kind of like settling I always thought that she was settling that's so interesting. It's it's like exactly the stuff we're learning in therapy. <laughs> 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 that's, my, that's my note today. But that should I be mean, my new career it, path. <laughs> these two opposing things and the whole exercise is to stop saying but in between them, right? Like, mm-hmm. like Miranda, you know, was this high powered businesswoman or whatever, this, this high powered lawyer in living in Manhattan but now she's doing this with her family kind of cancels out the first. But if you say like Miranda was this and now she lives in Brooklyn with her family and she quit her job, both things do exist. You know, even just this idea of like, she settled is one possibility and maybe she grew at the same time, you know, maybe those are both true. And it's just depending on the filters that we have on ourselves when we're watching Miranda or our own life experience. I don't know if filters is a good word, but the way that we see it based our own life experience. This next scene I loved so much. And that's Carrie coming home from the hospital in grand fashion. Yes. I loved this as well. Of course we have Anthony. Yes. Who makes everything better. Yeah. He's just the best. And then when the like bread boy comes around, <laughs> I don't know what they call it, hot guy, whatever. Yes. What did he call him? Prince Boner or something? Yeah, or... like something really, something really crazy like that. Oh, and the fact that she's like still hopped up on her meds and yeah, and just her whole little like foot in the air and just getting carried up the stairs. She's so delighted. It was hilarious. I love that he literally carried her. Like I was, I thought he was going to pull out a wheelchair, but nope. He just scooped her up and that, that was it. She's like, this is totally necessary. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, yeah, I'm with you. I love it. And I love their ridiculous uniforms. The whole, the whole Anthony thing just delights me and him being more involved. And even Charlotte says he needs to be more involved. He needs to feel like he's part of the group in a way I think is what she's trying to say yeah I love that I love that they're finally like saying it and acknowledging it and they're probably saying it because Stanford's gone but also like in the context of the whole show I think a lot of us were waiting for so long to just see them more as like main characters yeah you know for sure you always got the sense that Anthony was like really close with Charlotte 
but then you would only see Charlotte and Anthony together and you would only see Carrie with Stanford. And it was just like, why yeah. not all together? Very separate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I love that scene. <laughs> and then we go into Carrie doing the podcast while being high. Well, I'm not really high, so that's so like certain, but while being like, um, you know, still under the influence. Meds. Yeah. Yes. Still on her meds with that amazing hat and just riffing just she was so in it she was so like and I love how Charlotte is just sitting there almost like a babysitter just kind of like you're doing you like you're that's what you're saying all right here we are oh it took me a minute to realize that she was still kind of like on her meds doing it when they like yeah. did that first shot going into the window and she's got she's in front of the computer with the hat on I was like we are go like this is a choice and we are going there like I love that Charlotte probably watched her put that hat on I like I just imagine Charlotte watching her get dressed <laughs> and just be like yeah yeah go for it like Heck yeah. I love that Where so much that? like didn't even try to persuade her to do anything other than that she just was like let's go <laughs> oh, and I don't know how popular that podcast is, but I could imagine that somewhere on the internet that there would be some sort of article criticizing that she was, you know, maybe still on her meds and that she said this thing and that she's got this crazy hat on and like the right. shot of her like with the hat on, <laughs> you know, like as the picture in the article and some like junk article online, just being like, where is this podcast going? And I don't know. It was so funny. It completely cracked me up. I was like, I love this. The diaphragm story pops up with Samantha, which was an excellent episode as well. And like brought me right back. I'm like, oh yeah. And I love how Carrie just like dove right in and went there. I thought it was hilarious and clearly delighted her co- podcasters who love raunchy stories <laughs> yeah they really teed her up for that one yeah <laughs> I mean I just can't get that image of Samantha I do miss Samantha and <laughs> I can't get that image of like early season Samantha with her like 90s bangs like you know like, turn around I love Samantha's it. energy she, like, in that one her drink over yeah. Uh, I, I thought that, I don't remember if it was right after or later on in the episode about when she texts Samantha to let her know what had happened. I loved Samantha's response. It just was so like, it was so Samantha. It was like, Hey, it all was good things. Perfect. And it was nice to have a little bit more Samantha presence, even though we're probably not going to see actual Samantha, but it was yeah. nice to have that presence, have her actual response you know more than just one word response or more than you know a short response but then we get yeah. the the triple the dot three dots here moment yeah they oh. had to throw that one in there too I was just like oh that's sad but it was it was nice to to have Samantha pop in a little bit I can't help but think like and maybe I'm just reading way too far into it in the drama but <laughs> I can't help but think that like I couldn't help but wonder. Uh, <laughs> I should just go there. I'm going to type. I couldn't help but wonder. <laughs> I can't help but think that they're kind of digging on the fact that Kim Cattrall's just not going to be there. You know, like they have that moment where you get like a piece of Samantha and you're like, oh, like you kind of have like a little bit of false hope. And you kind of know it's false mm-hmm. hope. Like you're not actually going to see her. Yeah. And then I think what's funny, I almost have to wonder from Kim Cattrall's perspective, if it's like, listen, you guys, I said, no, I said, I'm done. I'm not on the show. And then like her name keeps popping up on the show in some way. She's just like, stop it. (laughs) I'm not going to be on the show. (laughs) It's haunting her. Stop trying to make Samantha happen again. (laughs) (laughs) Stop trying to make Fetch happen. Exactly. Like I kind of feel, I feel bad for her a little bit, but it's yeah. kind of funny she's it's just like they keep roping her in she's just too cool like when you see interviews with her you're like wow this woman is like in charge I, I love her I like, do I, I love she her really is like Samantha in real life I think she, I think she definitely has boundaries yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is great 
Yeah. And she's doing so many cool things. So, I mean, I see her like popping up all over the place now in different yeah. shows and stuff. So I'm like, well, she's not hurting for work. Like, right. <laughs> she's she good. just decided she was done with the character. So props yeah. to her. Poor Carrie though, for that little moment. Yeah. What do they call it? Left on red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then there's a scene with Charlotte and Harry having the conversation with the teachers. So we kind of did mm-hmm. talk about this already. Um, yeah. And, you know, I do kind of wonder just one last thought on that is, do you think, I mean, I, I guess how would they know to even do this, but do you think maybe the teachers could have like called and had a conversation? I would definitely hope that if there were some sort of big change especially to something like that that's kind of like you would imagine like they're going to be sending things home essentially that have their name on it and you would just kind of want to be alerted to like even if they did it in a way of like hey just notice this new change in the family here's an email or something I don't know but that would be my personal preference for sure so because it is it's a little shocking I felt bad for Harry here yeah yeah and I don't I feel like I don't even see him as being like necessarily like behind the times in any way I just see him as being like just a concerned parent that's like wait what is this I'm trying to sort this out and I know that he's gonna love them no matter what yeah so I don't have a concern that he's thinking of disowning his child or anything like that I just more feel bad for him having to be the last to know. Yeah, totally. I did love these teachers though, and that they all met together like that in this little circle. I thought, oh, this is a nice school. (laughs) So really the last thing we have to talk about is kind of the big crescendo. The big moment of this episode. Oh my gosh. I had so many varying feelings about this actually I don't even know where to begin actually I have so many thoughts what were your like initial thoughts on this whole scene I I feel like there were a lot of feelings happening at once we've got Miranda who's helping Carrie Mm -hmm. um, at her home and it sounds like they're kind of taking shifts like Charlotte's helping at some point Miranda's helping another so Mm -hmm. Miranda has her shift to help with this you know post-surgery Carrie And she's taking an opioid nap, Carrie. (laughs) They actually say opioid nap, which is kind of funny. Che shows up like I brought this tequila or something. It was tequila, right? I believe it was tequila. And I, I felt one of the feelings that I had was like, I continue to love Che and then like kind of hate Che. Cause I'm like, how old are you? Like that? I don't, maybe it's the, the older person in me. But I was like, I do not appreciate, like, if you're going to bring something by, bring me by a meal. Don't like bring me (sighs) alcohol. So it was kind of like this moment that we knew was happening eventually where Che and Miranda finally are like kind of together. It was like, I was kind of excited that this was happening, but also just like shaking my head. Like, why did you even think that was a good idea? Yeah. Yeah doesn't seem like something I would be like post-surgery. I mean, I don't drink anymore anyway. Even kind of inappropriate to have your boss come by and bring you a bottle of alcohol when you've just had surgery and you're taking painkillers. Like I just was kind of like, Uh, (laughs) what? Like a little like really clueless. Yeah. That was a little bit of an odd move. And then of course, I think they had to do it that way to set, like kind of tee all this up and set this up. And you could definitely see it coming. I think they buzz. And Miranda realizes it's Che and she goes and like fixes herself up. Yeah. You're like, here we are. Oh no, it's happening. And I felt like, oh, my prediction's coming true because we've got alcohol, we've got Miranda and Che and a situation here before it even started as they start taking shots, right? Miranda kind of does the flirty thing where she's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, you could ask me to take shots. Yeah. And they start taking shots, which is a horrible idea if you're there to take care of somebody. That's what I, I was just like, oh man. <laughs> so like bad decision number one or bad decision yeah. number two, I think is the first bad decision is bringing alcohol to somebody who's recovering from something. 
-hmm. And the second bad decision is to be the caretaker and be there for the purpose of helping this person who's essentially helpless at this moment yeah. and decide to take shots. <laughs> That's another bad decision. Yeah. And then of course they're warm, fuzzy and buzzing. And Miranda does the very obvious thing about the weed, right? It doesn't seem like Che's going to go there. Yeah. Like, I got to go and trying to stay cool. And Miranda's like, oh, if you weren't in such a hurry, I'd ask you to shotgun the weed or whatever again. Yeah. Which is so like, even the way she plays it, which I think is intentional, is like that moment where you don't want the person to go and you're trying to make something else happen. And like, it feels yeah. very intentional. It doesn't feel like she accidentally fell into this. No, it situation. definitely felt intentional. We definitely kind of saw it coming. And again, I'm sort of thinking in my head, on one hand, I'm excited because I've been waiting for this moment. And on the other hand, I'm thinking, how are two adults making such poor decisions as far as like... Just the fact that Carrie's recovering in the other room. Like that's, I was just like, oh, it reminded me actually, one of the reasons I actually loved the whole scene was because it brought me back to a lot of like that ridiculous place that we all are in at some point as teenagers, where you're truly making the stupidest decisions. Your brain is just not fully functioning because you're a teenager, because all you can think about is finally hooking up with that person. And I felt like it kind of brought me back to some of those, like, you know, we just were there when we're teenagers. And it was just so that to me, this whole scene was so that. I actually loved that Miranda was like in sweatpants and nothing was very glamorous. And it was just very um, kind of real. Like it was just was kind of like a very real sort of scene in my opinion and just, kind of childish in a way like it was a little childish in in kind of a good way like I kind of appreciated it yeah in in I feel both right I feel (laughs) that in one way it was like oh it's almost in a weird way I guess kind of like inner child stuff you know (laughs) like like Miranda's been denying herself something exactly for so long and so now there's this moment where you're like oh my god she's gonna go there but then the situation is so bad right you're like no this is I'm cringing too because this is so bad and like you're married and we love Steve and you know even if it's like this kind of lifeless dying marriage like we still love Steve and he still doesn't deserve this and it's still you know and they're being so loud. Hey, okay, really? To I kept that. thinking, like, I was like laughing, thinking, like, these are adults and like they're being so loud. Like, how do they not think that Carrie, like, do they really think Carrie's gonna sleep through all of this? The giggling, the laughing, the noise. Have you ever made that noise? <laughs> I, just, I don't remember any of the specific noises, but I do remember thinking, like, This is so, I, you know what? I have to say this too, though. I actually loved that this whole sex scene, like, wasn't a, like, pretty sex scene. No. I kind of loved that it was like, yeah, we kind of look like crazy people when we have sex and, like, that's real. And thank you for putting that just out there for for everybody. This wasn't like a, like, glam, you know, it wasn't like. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't romantic. Really? It was. It wasn't. Yeah. It just was this this person who hasn't had sex for a really long time, which she admitted, like it's been years for her and Steve, and and longing for something, finally having it happen, and she just went there. Like she just fully it was animalistic. Yeah, and it was in in that way for me. It was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I don't love like super done up sex scenes. I like the realness. To me, it's more sexy anyway. It's just like, yeah, that's that's a little more real. Well, I don't think the audience would have bought into any sort of like fantastical romantic version of this. Yeah. I feel like the audience would be like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but wait. Yeah. But wait, Steve, but wait, Carrie but wait, what are you doing? But wait, also, this is like, 
a very human moment for Miranda where she's just she's just finally letting loose yeah and so it is it's a lot of feelings and and I think you know I kind of just was like (laughs) you know just kind of like looking back and and then it's cutting between Carrie and what's happening in the kitchen and poor Carrie who of course is waking up of course she is that's the first thing I'm thinking of is if I'm either of those people, you know, if I'm in Carrie's position and that's you in the kitchen, or if I'm in the kitchen and that's you, you know, needing my help, like horrified, horrified that my best friend is witnessing this crazy animal sex moment. And also like that, that person that is my best friend soulmate person in that way is needing me and I'm that kind of caught up in my own stuff and just the whole thing really like I was like I can't (laughs) oh my (laughs) god I thought the whole thing was played so well like Carrie just heard the look of shock on her face as she realizes what's going on was so perfect I thought the acting was so incredible I thought Miranda did such a great job like that whole thing was so great and then Though I have to say, like, I was thinking if I were in Carrie's position, why not just do like a, <coughs> I'm waking up, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, just kind of like, hey, mm, yawn, you know, and just like really try to, inter- instead, the poor thing moving. is like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I have no idea what's happening. Like, I think that's probably what I would do. <laughs> but instead she like flails around and has this whole moment of like, trying to go pee and I'm like peeing in a bottle as soon as I saw the empty bottle I'm like oh no like she's gonna do that and I was just like oh this is awful like this is so sad and then like I yeah I just was (laughs) so so bad oh my god he's that little (laughs) and how you I don't know how she could like hold herself up with like the The hips and the one arm and I just was like oh no this is bad yeah I think I would have just deliberately been a little bit more bold and obnoxious about it of course yeah. we need her not to be for this whole scene to play exactly out. but like I think in real life I would just I would see the thing and realize I saw the thing and pretend I didn't exactly <laughs> and then just be like Hey, I'm up. Like, just be yeah, exactly loud. Like, I really wow, need to go to the- just woke up in there. Like, just kind of like obnoxious <laughs> and being loud. Exactly. Yeah. Same. Oh, I felt, yeah, it was. And really, then address um, it later. Right? Exactly. You know, but obviously, exactly. there's so, so we have the whole moment play out. And then we have, you know, Carrie spilling the pee on the bed, which is horrifying as well yeah totally oh, helpless thing. In her own pee. and of course she's frustrated and angry because the whole point of her having Miranda there is to have help yeah Miranda chose you know to essentially be selfish I mean she she was also starved before this so you kind of understand but at the same time it's like not the time and place Miranda yeah <laughs> you know, like, yeah like get your stuff together you know so then she's kind of yelling out to Miranda when Miranda goes to the bathroom which is even more I feel like even now that I think about it that's even more of kind of an insult to Carrie it's like Carrie needed to pee and Miranda's like oh and she just goes in the bathroom <laughs> she's in all of her feels I have to know too I really wondered when I was watching this were you on Miranda's side or Carrie's side for this argument well I completely understood Carrie at the beginning I was like, of course she's frustrated and angry. This is completely inappropriate. And Miranda is acting like kind of an aloof teenager. You know, she's like, oh, 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 I guess I shouldn't drink anymore. Like, or whatever she says about like, no more shots for me. Like, yeah. And so she, and Cynthia Nixon's playing it perfect because she is still probably buzzed, you know, and she was shotgun with weed and she just had like an amazing sexual experience. Like. (laughs) So she's all kind of playing it like, oh, you know, like a little bit loose, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And and not sober. And I guess at the beginning, I was definitely on Carrie's side. And I was like, Carrie's right here. This isn't cool. Carrie was very mad. Yeah. And, but kind of justified so, you know, and just didn't have an understanding. But then when Miranda really gets real 
that I just cried. Yes. Cause I was like, wow, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that yeah. where you're like, I want to be more than I am. Mm-hmm. Like those statements that she's, she's making a lot of like big statements that are like just heart wrenching for me. Yes. You know, or she yeah. hates her marriage. Yeah. And in her mind, she thinks she's hated it forever. And I don't, I don't think that's true, but yeah. she says it feels true. Right. Yeah. I just feel like when you're in that feeling and in that moment and you're so done, you say those things and you, you just like, that just felt so real. And I think even, I don't, I follow Cynthia Nixon as well. And she posted something recently after that episode came out and was like, thank you everybody for what you said about my performance. And I guess a lot of people were really touched by it. And I was one of those people. I was like, damn, like. I agree. I thought that this particular scene, like this scene to me was probably my favorite so far in the whole series. Just that dynamic between Carrie and Miranda that I've always loved anyway. And then, yeah, just watching them kind of go back and forth here and like Carrie's anger. And I just felt like Miranda just broke our heart, you know, like just the way she was so real. And like, I thought that Carrie kind of focused immediately on the drinking, whereas to me it was, well, maybe just because we've been seeing some of the backstory, but it was like, to me, immediately obvious that this had nothing to do with drinking, you know, like this, we don't need to focus on the alcohol here. Like this is about her, just her inner world, her trying to feel good about the life that she's created. And I just, oh, I just loved that whole scene. I just, I couldn't, yeah, I just felt like I was so there for both of them. I don't know. It's hard. It is hard to take a side. I think they were both had their, their points, you know? Um, yeah, I just, I just felt for Miranda. And I think anytime somebody just gets really to the heart of it, all of a sudden, you know, when it's like, Oh, yeah. There it is. yeah. Know, Miranda has been kind of dancing around it and avoiding it and trying to pretend she's okay for a while. Yeah. And even, you know, seems like other people saw issues before she did. They kind of focused on the drinking for a while. Charlotte's, you know, talking to her in the cafe a few episodes ago about like her not having sex for several years. Even early, early in the season, there's a comment I think that Charlotte makes after Big dies. And she says, you guys were the happiest couple I knew. And then she goes, oh, sorry, Miranda. Yeah. It's like, well, obviously her friends are seeing something amiss, you know, and it's just everything kind of boiled up. And I guess it's what happens when things go unchecked. Yeah. Oh gosh. It just, it was such a good scene. Yeah. It was such a good scene. I I think I cried both times I watched it (laughs) because I just (laughs) felt her and, and Cynthia Nixon is brilliant. I just feel like she's so good. I agree. At all of it. I agree. I love them together. I love them in these moments where they do have these fights and these kind of ruptures and repairs and like the way that they work through it together. I think that they do such a good job together yeah. in these types of scenes. And I love that Carrie said, I think I wrote it actually, I'll go to the quotes, which is now a thing apparently. <laughs> so this is Miranda. What would I say that I don't want to be this person anymore, that I want to be something more, that this isn't enough? And then Carrie says, that's exactly what you should say. I was just like, A plus in validation. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It just, it was really sweet for Carrie to finally kind of like see her, you know, in that moment. And it just, it, it made me overall just gave me lots of feelings. I just, I was already, and I was, I was a little bit happy for Miranda. I felt like it was really juvenile and the whole thing. I was kind of disappointed in Shay, to be honest, like, Che, I don't know what's going on in their life, but like, they don't need to be coming up with alcohol and like fingering a friend in a kitchen. Like the whole thing was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a little wild, but I was like, kind of happy for Miranda. I'm like, Hey, you, you get yours. <laughs> like you have this awakening moment, even though the timing is terrible. She needed yeah. something to snap her into what was really going on she absolutely had to have something to get her to like wake up and see like the depth of her despair and her, you know, what's going on with her and stop pretending that everything's okay. Definitely. 
Definitely. And now she can't ignore what she's put out into the light, you know? So that's kind of what I'm curious about for her moving forward on these next episodes. Like, well, we can't bury this now. Like it's out in the open. We're going through something now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Really. And and I felt the same about Che. I, I, as an earlier prediction before I had seen this episode, obviously when we did an earlier prediction, I said, I think the alcohol is going to lead to a situation that I think that Che is going to say no, because Miranda's too drunk. Yeah. So I was definitely disappointed because as it was happening, I go, oh, my prediction's coming true. And then it actually happened. I was like, oh, they're just going there. And yep. he's not going to stop this. Didn't care at all. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I thought there would be, I think they keep playing Che very cool, but I thought there would be like a moment of maturity for her. I did too. For them. I did too. I, I definitely... I, I was getting a sense that maybe they were a little bit more like mature and woke than they actually are. (laughs) I was like, oh, it kind of reminded me of some people I had run across their paths when I was in my like very early twenties or even late teens, where it's like just such an immature mentality. And I was just like, oh, come on, come on. Like it just, just fully yeah. selfish, really. Fully, I mean, fully selfish. You would have to imagine the amount of times they're showing conversations between Miranda and Shay that Shay knows Miranda's married. Exactly. I don't think they're in it for like <laughs> the long haul or for a relationship in any capacity. So I'm a little bit curious. I know we haven't really gotten to predictions yet, but I'm just curious about is Miranda just doing this because it feels good and she's, that's it? Or is she actually liking this person much more than that person might like her back? Because then we notice Miranda's listening to their podcast and like, kind of like in those like early lovey, like I have a crush on someone feelings. And I don't know if it would necessarily be reciprocated. Ugh. Yeah, I know. I and I bad of- memories. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just, I, it makes me really or curious because I'm like, I don't know. You know. Yeah. In that, exactly. in that beginning stage, you're just blinded by like this infatuation. This is more about something that Che is bringing out in Miranda that Miranda has ignored. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It not really be as much about Che and Miranda having an epic love story. And exactly. We were kind of hoping for that. I, I was, I was hoping yeah. that Che would be a, probably a better person than we've seen Che be so far. Yeah. I don't, I definitely think Che is more of like a catalyst and not necessarily like a love, you know, not, not a great love, more of just like an awakening and a catalyst and like a, yeah, exactly. The more that we see them, the more that it's like, it feels that there's just more of this lifestyle of like sleeping around and stuff. Exactly which would not be great for Miranda. I want more than that for Miranda. <laughs> which is, I mean, it's a choice for Che. Like that's the lifestyle that they choose, but at the same time, yeah, yeah. not great for Miranda. Not probably what Miranda's looking for long-term. Exactly. The very last few little scenes are Miranda listening to the podcast, like you said, and making herself a drink and realizing as she gets this Amazon prompt that she's the one who ordered the book, Mm -hmm. which is such a good twist. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it coming, but I didn't see it coming. I didn't. I really thought I I was just, we were waiting for, I was like, oh, we didn't resolve the thing with Charlotte. She never confronts Charlotte about sending the book. I just thought it was Charlotte. And then she says, what else did I drunk order and dumps everything out? I was like, wow, I like that. I like that choice. Yeah. And that it's really about Miranda figuring out Miranda. Yeah. It, it feels like she's on the precipice of something. And then we move into the very last scene, going to physical therapy. It's kind of a yes. little fun scene. And and Carrie meets Travis. Travis was his name. Yeah. That was pretty <laughs> funny. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so her face is adorable she's like hello <laughs> yeah it was very fun very cute yeah just like a cute just fun scene just kind of like a nice little yeah. reprieve and is this a scam is is this something that this physical therapy office is running 
like we're going to give all the people Travis and then tell them he's not covered so that they pay extra. <laughs> like, pay what, <laughs> what's going on here? This feels like it's like genius. It's like that episode of Friends where they're trying to quit the gym and they bring out the like beautiful woman right. in the, like, sandex and she's like, You want to quit the gym? <laughs> you know, like, oh no, no, we'll say, you know, it feels like that. But no, it was, it was, a uh, it was definitely really cute. And I love the final scene where she's in that beautiful outfit, the sequin, mm-hmm. big slit, and um, she puts her heels back on. She's got her big carry hair again. Yeah. It felt like she was kind of an old lady the way they were dressing her in this. And it was probably intentional. Yeah. Yeah. And then now she's back. It only took her three months and she's back in heels, yeah. went through her little hip thing and... And now she's, she's rocking and rolling. I guess there's nothing wrong with being an old lady. I just, I just was like, oh, this doesn't feel like Carrie. A lot of these outfits were kind of dowdy, you know? Yeah. Like they had her with, with a braid a lot and with, um, you know, the hospital gown, <laughs> she was recovering. So she couldn't be super glam. Even the very beginning, the first outfit, she's kind of in this big flowy, almost looks like a nighty dress that's like got lace on the top and it's kind of silky and it's real away from her body and I was kind of like oh like I'm not loving these outfits and the what they call it the socks and stocks outfit yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) so I guess we can go into outfits did you have a favorite you know what I think on this one I didn't really pay attention to the clothes as much but I just the two things that I noticed as far as clothes that I loved that I already did kind of mention was Carrie's pearls in the hospital because I just loved that (laughs) and um I loved the fact that there was a sex scene with somebody in sweatpants I just I really appreciated Miranda's sweatpants (laughs) that is real life it's real and I I like it I like it I'm into it and Miranda Miranda looks good in her comfies I thought so and I'm like you know I am here for more real life sex scenes in sweatpants yeah let's it's a thing elastic waistbands you don't have to do you could just you could be warm no naked butt cheeks you could just yeah. slip a hand in there and it's <laughs> <laughs> just get your hand in there you know it's, everybody just, stays warm it's, it's all real it's, it's real right yeah sometimes you don't want to get fully naked and that's okay yeah. that's what elastic sweatbands are for people are honking out here um <laughs> they're yeah, excited about this <laughs> yeah woo-hoo, woo-hoo. <laughs> Yeah, honk if you like elastic sweatpants. Or <laughs> I tend to get in my head in the initial moments when things are starting up sometimes, and you're like trying to unbutton somebody's pants, or you're, <laughs> and it's never like the movies. It's never like whoosh. Oh, it never. Like is. everything just slips off effortlessly. It's literally like, can you help me? Can you like, yeah. push the butt up? Like, let me get. You know, it's like yeah. awkward. Your pants get caught on your you know, ankles. It doesn't and... make sex bad. It's just, that's what it is. That's yeah. life. Exactly. Like it's, you know, trying to untie the drawstring and having it get caught or. And I think we need to see more of this on TV. Yes. And I think we would all laugh hysterically because we yeah. all know it's true. Yes. Anybody who's having sex knows that this is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I approve. I approve of those choices. There was a lot of like fun stuff in this one, like from the other characters, not from Carrie. <laughs> But my two favorites were Carrie and it was the final, I want to call it the hero outfit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that outfit that they bring out at the very end finale outfit of the runway show. That's yeah. what that dress was at the very end was like, boom, Carrie's back, beautiful, glamorous, sparkly fitted dress. I thought she looked absolutely perfect. And the whole like looking back and just Yes. Like the whole thing was just, yes, you're fully embodied as glam, Carrie. I love it. To take a page from your book, I actually also starred the outfit when she's texting um, Samantha because I loved that adorable, it looks kind of like a vintage sweatshirt that she had cut the top out of. Yes. Very winkle color and it's a New York City you know, Skyline, it had the Twin Towers on it. It had an apple with the city in it. And I was like, as somebody who's obsessed with fruit and New York, 
I need this sweatshirt like immediately, <laughs> like yesterday. I, so I don't know. I might have to like research and see if it's available somewhere because I <laughs> loved, I would literally wear that every day, real life all the time. Perfect. You know, it had yes. all the things that I like and I look good in periwinkle. So yeah. <laughs> all the things that I needed. And I even liked her funny glasses. She had kind of like big, kind of like intentionally, they looked like hipster glasses to me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they looked cute with her whole vibe and her like sweatpants outfit. Yeah. I love all the sweatpants. I'm just so here for all the lounge wear. <laughs> I'm over here like sparkles and sequins and you're like just you know that comfy one (laughs) I was like that one looks soft I like it (laughs) I think I would I think I want to slip a hand into that one (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly oh man (laughs) that oh did you have a favorite moment um you know I it's hard to say a a specific favorite moment in this one because I really did like them all so much but I did like her peeing in the hospital and like did not knowing it that cracked me up and then I just loved the the yeah the intense moment we just talked about between her and Miranda I don't know if I'd call it like a fight scene but it was kind of a fight but just that confrontation it was it was fantastic it was a crescendo the whole yeah boom like here we are all the things have built up and here we are definitely that I don't it's funny because I didn't even star that as my favorite but it did hit me really hard and it was an intense, like impactful scene for me. And I absolutely loved Miranda's Cynthia Nixon's performance, Miranda's, you know, moment of kind of realizing and coming to that space. And I just felt like that was extremely relatable to me to come to that space of like, I'm not okay where I am. And I absolutely have to change something now. Yeah. You know, I definitely relate to that. And It doesn't mean anything's wrong with, you know, necessarily with what has led her to that point as far as like her marriage and things, but just that realization, like something has to change right now. Yeah. It's like, that was like inspirational for me. And I was so excited to see like where Miranda's going to go. Same. So yeah, I'm like, let's go, Miranda. Let's (laughs) let's walk through this together. Um, (laughs) And then of course, the one that I starred, was actually the bread boy delivery scene Ah, (laughs) where, you know, Carrie's carried up the stairs and Mario Cantone is there and really anything with, with Anthony in it is a favorite for me. I just love Anthony and, and I love that he was there for her and still him, but he's also like showing a softness of like really taking care of a friend yes you know, I agree him in like kind of that aspect of like oh he's a really good friend yeah and he's not just always kind of like talking about hot asses and you know <laughs> not just a stereotypical tv gay anymore yeah I agree is it, is it pc to say a gay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. but you know what I mean I feel like we, we get these I'm so tired of these stereotypical characters where it's like one note like they're just there to be a character actor and their whole point is to be obsessed with sex obsessed with butts and talk about dicks and just that you know and I feel like now we're getting dimension to his character I can't I agree that was a great scene there was a lot of great like little (laughs) scenes in this episode yeah Yeah, that's why it's hard to pick a favorite overall I think this was my favorite so far yeah, I feel like the last few I've said that. Like when I, I'm like, that's my favorite so far. That's my favorite so far. Yeah. Like, Where are they gonna go next? Like, do you want to hear some quotes? I you know, do. Let's quote. hear them. Okay. I'm sorry if my medical degree contradicts Google's algorithm, Dr. Patel. <laughs> that's a good one. I was like, oh, that's kind of timely right now. I feel like yep. sure would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> She's, you know, with everything going on in the world, that's a commentary for sure. Yes. Oh, I filled out all the forms online during an extremely productive panic attack. Carrie. (laughs) Relatable. I was like, yep, I I know an extremely productive panic attack when I, when I experience one. Uh, This is a very special episode of Friends, the one where they lower her to the toilet. Carrie. Good one. I don't know if you've ever been a Friends fan. I haven't. I know it's one of those weird things about me. I never got into Friends and I never watched The Office. 
So do you know that the titles of Friends, all the titles of the episodes are the one where blah, blah, blah. No, I didn't know that. So that's the joke. (laughs) That's the joke. (laughs) Like if you look at all the titles, it's like the one where Monica gets a roommate and that's when Rachel shows up or the one where Mm. with the jellyfish or the one with, you know. So I still thought it was funny, but I was just laughing. I didn't know why I was laughing. Yeah. (laughs) I'm that person in the room. Ha ha. Now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, I liked that. I thought that was clever. Oh, I'm not saying I've got all of me figured out, but I haven't shit my pants in three years. Che. <laughs> Love it. That's, that's a, good, a good one. My vagina, my story. Carrie. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, indeed. I already did the scene with Carrie and Miranda, the intense scene. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that kid is amazing. Carrie. And that's yeah. to, to Charlotte about rock. Yeah, that was that's a good one. Oh, a plus in validation again. Mm-hmm. You know, like a plus Handled that really well. Your friend. Yeah. Anyway, I guess that's it for this one. That's it for this one. I'm so, especially now that we've talked about this one and loving it so much, I'm so excited to watch the next one. Yes. And if you don't know, you probably don't know if you're listening to this, it comes out today, episode six. So we were playing a little bit of catch up because we took that break over the holidays and gave each other a little grace to relax. So now we are caught up and we have an episode, a brand new episode that's up on HBO as we speak. We're so excited to like actually see where we're going to go. Um, yeah. Now I'm inspired to go watch it. Like probably right now. I know I'm literally going to like make food <laughs> and sit down in front of it. Me too. I think I'm going to make popcorn. <laughs> I like to do one watch just to watch and like experience mm-hmm. the show. And then I like to do one watch with notes. <laughs> Same. So we, we, you know, we obsess over here. It's fine. <laughs> Everything so, is fine. <laughs> That's it for this one. So it's, we're going to get ourselves ready and get our food and snacks and watch episode six. We are so happy that you were here and hope that you enjoy this episode of Will You Be My Friend? I am Kylie Gail Garcia. You can find me at vegan.coach.kylie on Instagram or vegancoachkylie.com. You can also email us at will you be my friend show at gmail.com if you want to help us improve the podcast or if you have any comments or questions that you want to send in, we will definitely address them on the next podcast whenever we get them. And yeah, you can find us on will you be my friend show on Instagram and will you be my friend on Spotify you want to put that in quotes so you can find it. I'm also going to put a link in the description of this YouTube video so you can just click right through and it will take you to the show. And oh. Jazz, how they how how they can find you. <laughs> I'm going to leave that. <laughs> how they can find you, Jazz. <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, you can find me at jasmine.rose.doula at on Instagram. That's that's a mouthful. Um, but I'm taking a break for January. So find me there, but don't talk to me there. Cause I won't be there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Send her a message and she will get in February. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then just jasminerosedoula.com. Yes. Beautiful. And you mm-hmm. absolutely do deserve that break. You've been nonstop busting your butt for yourself and your family and others. And I'm just so happy that I'm trying not to be overbearing with this so that you can actually get a real break. (laughs) I'm getting a break and it's, it's feeling good. Oh, perfect. Well, and now the little one just walked in the door. Oh, wonderful. The timing is excellent. Do you want me to go ahead and just say bye here? Yeah, let's say bye. Bye.